I didn't ever think that there was anything wrong. I, I had no symptoms, no family history of cardiovascular disease. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I live a healthy lifestyle. Until I didn't wake up that night in Aruba, I thought I was a perfectly healthy person. I went on vacation with my girlfriend and her four kids. We arrived at about 5 p.m. the first day, had a nice dinner, went to sleep at about nine o'clock, and my girlfriend found me unconscious and unresponsive at about 2.30 in the morning. She tried to revive me unsuccessfully. I was transported, not by ambulance, but essentially by a taxi driver to the local hospital in Aruba. I spent half a day there. I was subsequently transferred via med flight to a hospital in Miami, Florida. When I got to the hospital in Miami, they were trying to figure out why I was in constant ventricular tachycardia, why my ejection fraction was crashing. They couldn't determine that. I spent about 10 days there before I was subsequently transferred to a hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. When I arrived at the hospital in Boston, I met with a heart failure specialist and she informed me that I was in acute heart failure and literally within the first five minutes told me that I might need a heart transplant. I was informed that the first step would be to implant an ICD, which is essentially a pacemaker. After about two days, it was determined that that wasn't going to help the situation, so the second surgery was to implant a impella device, and the effort was to try to take some of the pressure off my native heart. After about seven to 10 days, it was determined that the impella pump was not going to be sufficient to address the issues that I was having. And at that point, a biopsy was done. And the results of the biopsy confirmed that I was diagnosed with giant cell myocarditis, which is one of the rare disorders in the world. It's been diagnosed less than 300 times since it was first discovered in 1905. And unfortunately, the consequences of giant cell myocarditis are grave. Most folks are diagnosed at autopsy. In addition to having a rare disorder, I also am blessed with having a rare blood type, which is O negative. There are about 2,000 hearts available for transplant in the United States each year. Approximately 6.5% of the population is O negative. I needed an O negative heart. If you just do the math of the 2,000 available, that means about 130 O negative hearts are available each year in the United States. So the probability of success in my situation was very low. It was at that point that I was put on the transplant list and a series of additional surgeries took place. The first one was to put me on ECMO, which is essentially life support. The next course of action was to perform another heart surgery. This time a sternotomy was performed and this was essentially a bridge to transplant. It was the last surgery that would be performed before a heart transplant, which hopefully would come in time to save my life. There's a lot of feelings that one goes through when you're sitting in a hospital bed in the ICU, knowing that your life is dependent on someone else's loss. It's a difficult thing to wrap your head around. While I was in the cardiac ICU, I developed what became a life-threatening clot. My cardiac surgeon came into my room at about 9.30 p.m. and said that we have some bad news. He said that the clot needed to be removed the next morning. So I was wrapping my head around going through a second sternotomy, recognizing that I might have a grave outcome waiting for transplant. About 45 minutes later, the doctor came back into my room and said, we have some great news. And my response was, the clot's not life-threatening anymore. And he said, no, we got a heart, and it's a great heart. At that point, I really had two different emotions. The first one was sadness. I was sad that somebody lost their life. On the second hand, I was also grateful. I was grateful that a donor heart came in time to save my life. Today I'm living a very great life. I'm back to work, I'm with my family, I'm with my loved ones. I'm grateful to the donor family. I'm grateful to my cardiac surgeon and the entire staff at the hospital for all that they did to save my life. I'm here today because of advances made possible by the American Heart Association. I'm grateful for those advances, but there's still a lot of work to be done. My name is John Spurzel, and my family is why.